You know, the story of Robin Hood has been done many times. You know, movies, TV shows, I mean, you name it, it's been done. Well, Ridley Scott had the idea uh, back in 2009, maybe, yay, we should, uh, we should take our own crack at it. And, uh, hmm, not sure if it was that successful, but uh, let's take a look at Ridley Scott's Robin Hood. In 12th century England, Robin Longstride and his band of marauders confront corruption in a local village and lead an uprising against the crown that will forever alter the balance of world power. The movie stars Russell Crowe, Kate Blanchett, Max von Sydow, Mark Strong, Oscar Isaac, and Matthew McFadden. This is not the Robin Hood story that you know. I mean, like I said, it's been done many, many times in the past. Really, Scott had the idea, let, let's try to take this in a new direction. Let's come at it from a different angle. Let's see the origins of Robin Hood. Like, how did he become Robin Hood? So this is kind of like Robin Hood Begins. It's an intriguing idea, but how successful was it? Hmm. First off, let's talk about the acting. Uh, the, one of the, the big standouts for me was Max von Sydow. Um, the part that he plays um, as, uh, I guess, Lord Loxley. Um, he's, look, it's Max von Sydow. He, he's been a staple of the movie industry for, what, 50, 60, however many years? I mean, a lot of years. And having him play this part is, uh, it brings the sort of gravitas that a story like this needs. Kate Blanchett, the bringing her into it was kind of a, a, a well, an inspired choice. Uh, Kate Blanchett is, is pretty awesome, you know, in, in everything that she does. Um, the problem here is that she doesn't have like a whole lot to do. Um, she's sort of, she's sort of thrust into some of the action in some points, uh, doesn't feel very, uh, doesn't feel very natural at times, um, but at the same time, look, I, I, I liked her performance here. Kevin Durand, Scott Grimes, and Alan Doyle as the the Merry Men. Um, I I really enjoyed when they were on screen. There's uh, they bring that sort of levity, you know, that that a story like this really is crying out for. I mean, in in many ways. And Kevin Durand is one of those actors that every time I see him, I'm like. I don't know what it is about this guy. He's got such a unique look that I've I always like him when I see him in a movie and he he brings some pretty awesome stuff here as Little John. It's it's really pretty great. And Scott Grimes uh for whatever reason um I've just been a fan of his ever since Critters. If anybody remembers the movie Critters, yeah, that's Scott Grimes. Um you know when I saw him in Band of Brothers, he was amazing in that. In this, he doesn't get look, there's there's a lot of story being told here, and the characterization definitely takes a back seat, but I like what Scott Grimes does here um, as, as as much as he can do. And Alan Doyle was brought in, brought on um, basically to, to be sort of the minstrel of the group. Um, he doesn't have a whole lot to do other than sing, which, you know, is, is not bad. Mark Strong as Godfrey. Uh, Mark Strong plays the... I guess the the main villain you you really would say uh, from this story. Um, it's it's kind of interesting to see the sheriff of Nottingham, played by Matthew McFadden, kind of taken uh, taken away and almost like like he's not a threat yet. He's there, but he's not a threat yet. And Mark Strong is is kind of the 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 big baddie in this movie. And he there's something about the way that he delivers his lines. It's almost like it's just, it's like every line is just delicious. And I, I love Mark Strong. Uh, like I said, it, pretty much everything I've seen him in, I love him in villainous roles. It's just, it's, he's really, really good. And I liked him here. I just, I just, I, I'm being coy and on purpose because I, I haven't gotten to the part where things don't work right. But you got Oscar Isaac as Prince John. And Oscar Isaac is great. Uh, it's it's a very early role for him. Um, he was in Body of Lies, which I think was his first big movie. Uh, so a couple of years prior to this. So it's cool to see a young Oscar Isaac uh, playing this part and doing what he can with it. I mean, look, there's, there's some story issues and, and it kind of overshadows some of the acting, but the acting overall was really, really good. And then there's Russell Crowe. He, he's, he's Robin Hood. 
Robin Longstride. And, and the problem here is that you just don't like him very much. The first time that you see Robin Longstride, he's basically in a fight with Little John. And, uh, you know, King Richard gets in the middle of it and he's asking what's going on. And Robin basically tells the truth. And I don't know, that's not a, that's not like a, that's not something that should be praised. You know, everyone should be honest. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, okay, then, then he's just an honest guy. But then the next time you see him, he's running away from the battle and impersonating a knight in order to get back home. Not exactly the most likable thing in your main character. The good thing is, is that you do start to warm up to him uh, around, I would say, the midway point of the movie, which is, that's a problem, right? When the story is focused around this person and you don't really care for him yet. And the problem is the plot has moved along so far up to this point that you almost just, you get this feeling of, but I, I don't really care. Look, technically, the movie is masterfully done. You know, Ridley is a master at uh, costume design, set design, the way things look, the scale of it is just, it's insane. It, it really is. It's its kind of one of those, I guess, the, the last stand of these big sort of, uh, I don't know, just like epic type action scenes and things like that with tons of people. You just don't see that very much anymore. And it's, it was really, really fun to see. And a little kind of side note, it's kind of cool. A lot of the chain mail was reused from when he did Kingdom of Heaven. You know, the look of the movie is, is actually really nice. I really like the way it looks, but the 4K transfer on the disc is very inconsistent. Like there are moments where it's just, it's jaw droppingly beautiful. And then these weird, murky, almost out of focus scenes, it's it's really kind of strange. And it's one of those things where I'm kind of like, I probably could have just bought the Blu-ray and would have been probably fine. The special features uh, are a little bit lacking for a Ridley Scott presentation on, on disc as well. Um, a lot of the, uh, in fact, all of the, the, the special features are on the Blu-ray anyway. So, it's kind of one of those things where, depending on whatever's cheaper, if you were going to buy this, I mean, yeah, you could probably just buy the Blu-ray. There is a documentary by Charles de Lazarica, um, who did his amazing Alien quadrilogy and Alien sets. Um, he did the amazing, amazing Kingdom of Heaven uh, documentary, which we haven't gotten to yet, and the Blade Runner one, which we haven't gotten to yet. But, but yeah, it's it's short. You know, for usually a Ridley Scott documentary is usually like a like a two hour thing, you know, and you get to just kind of settle in and, and ease into seeing all of this behind the scenes footage. You really don't get a whole lot of it. It's just under an hour. And that's kind of a bummer. You know, I wanted to learn more about, you know, how things were done and what were some of the choices made, things like that. There is also uh, a quite extensive image gallery on here, so, uh, seeing some of the concept art and and some of the you know the, the designs on some of the, the the costumes and things like that. It's it's pretty interesting stuff, but I mean not everybody's into that. You know, not everybody wants to to watch an hour worth of storyboards. Now, as I showed at the very very beginning, this this was forty three percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and I kind of get it. I understand. I mean, if you if you can warm yourself up to to Russell Crowe's Robin Hood right at the beginning, then sure, you know, you, you might enjoy this. But the problem is, like I said, the character of Robin Hood is just not that likable until way later in the movie. And by then, you've already kind of lost your patience and it's it's kind of lost you as a viewer. So it's it's a really it's a, it's a strange movie. It's, it's beautifully shot, masterfully done. The, like I said, the sets, every, the costumes, everything's great. But the story's just not there. And, and that's where I feel like uh, the, the biggest issue is. So for me, I feel like this is probably going to be a 2.5 out of 4, which is not really great. And, you know, when it comes down to it, shouldn't Robin Hood be a little fun? So, Robin Hood. Yeah, 
not 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 the biggest fan uh, of this movie. And but I'm I'm kind of curious. Are, are there any people out there that you know you may have watched this and you say, yeah, I'm, I'm I love this movie. Let me know down below what you think about it, and we'll talk about it because. Look, I'd I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, the story and the the characters are everything, and it just didn't work for me. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.